Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you know what we did yesterday and where the hell we are today? Well, yesterday we covered Ezekiel chapter 12. We sure as fuck did. And in that chapter, um, Ezekiel had to pack his bags and... <laughs> <laughs> get he and, had to scamper. And then he dug a hole in the wall. And he, as you do. And he left Jerusalem as a performance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, But I'm not really sure how he was in Jerusalem because I thought he was in Babylon. Oh, he was. And uh, Oh, you got some information about I this. have some information, and somebody owes me an apology. I'm sure I was wrong. You were, I'm always wrong. Well, you, you, we do an episode where I'm always wrong. That is true. That is true. But... 99% of the time, I'm wrong, and I'm, like, adamant. Yeah. And this time, like, I literally went back and listened to the timeline so, that we covered in Chapter 1. And Ezekiel was in Babylon. Um, he was taken there during the second wave. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. And we specifically covered that in the timeline in Chapter 1. Okay. It's, like, within the first 10 minutes of the episode. Got it. So, so you you were definitely right then. Yes, I um, was definitely right. I got one more correction to throw out there. Okay. You were right one more time. Oh, was I? You were right twice yeah, last Holy yesterday. Holy shit. Yeah. Canadians do not drive on the left side of the road. They drive on the right side. I was mistaken. I, I said in the podcast episode uh -huh. that when I was up there, I was a kid, uh -huh. and I wasn't actually driving, but I, I could have sworn we drove on the left side of the road, but it was probably just me looking at the metric system and getting all kinds of fucked up. <laughs> so... <laughs> And like I said, I knew in Toronto that they drove on the uh, right side of the road. Yeah. So I was like, unless they do a different province, you are wrong. I was wrong. You so were right twice yesterday. I really am okay with the world exploding right now um, because <laughs> I've reached peak wifeism. <laughs> All right. So yesterday we read Ezekiel chapter 12. Yes. Um, oh, actually, real quick before we get into that. <laughs> yeah. So we're on our, our Discord tonight. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to wait for this episode to do this because I'm, I'm really grateful. And it, um, it really does mean a lot to us, guys. So I just wanted to say this out loud that um, we are doing a Patreon drive right now. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to get to a $400 per month level on that Patreon to take care of some things. As far as pushing our podcast forward with regard to advertising and different things like that. Mm -hmm. And one of our current patrons and one of our current Discord friends, Bretty, um, up their donation level um, by $5. And I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you, Bretty. You are more than just um, someone who contributes to our podcast. You are a really great friend, and we love having you around. So we really, really, really appreciate you. And and that's a fact. I mean, yeah. even without the uh, support, the fun that you give us in the Discord, uh, like you're amazing. Yeah. You're amazing. You are like the bee's knees, my man. Definitely. Um. So that being said, today we are getting into Ezekiel chapter thirteen. Yes. Are you ready to do this? I am. Let's go. Let's do it. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, we are back and jumping into Ezekiel chapter 13. Okay. Easy, Kyle. Here we go. <laughs> the word of the Lord yeah. came to me. Did it. It did. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Me being Ezekiel, and now I'm quoting God. Okay. I, Ezekiel, am quoting God. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Son of man, ya mere human, ya worm, <laughs> as we know from previous chapters, that's what he means. Yeah. Yeah. Prophecy against the prophets of Israel. Israel, who are now prophesying. That's a goddamn Wow, that's mouthful. a lot of profiting in, wow. Prophecy okay. against the prophets who are prophesying. Okay. okay. 
So he's going to determine, he's going to prophesy the fate of the prophets that are profiting in. <laughs> They're profiting <laughs> from their prophets. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of I, guess, I can't it's not good <laughs> so anyway there's a prophecy coming say to those who prophesy out of their own imagination hear the word of the Lord this is what the sovereign Lord says okay. I, he says I says I says so again these prophets are going to have mm-hmm. to take the word of Ezekiel uh-huh. that God yeah. is speaking through him to them because God can't um, get on the bullhorn and talk to them his damn self. Right, even though hypothetically they are also prophets. Right. According to them. According to them, but not according to the Yahweh guy. Right, who is only speaking through Ezekiel. Right. Okay, I'm just, I'm clarifying, that's yes. all. Yes, yes, okay. you understand the right of it. Got it. Okay, so he is telling him to tell him to tell him that he said to tell him. <laughs> Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Your prophets, Israel, are like jackals among ruins. Goddamn jackals. Mm, yeah. You have not gone up to the breaches in the wall to repair it for the people of Israel so that it will stand firm in the battle on the day of the Lord. As I recall, Ezekiel was actually putting holes in that fucking wall. <gasps> That's true. He's And I was talking twice. the last chapter about how the people that saw him doing that would be pissed because they got to go up there and fix the fucking holes that he put in to show them how to leave it, Jerusalem when they get exiled. He he did it twice. He did once it twice. in a vision and then once and um, like, in his real? little play act yeah. thing. I'm where like, he... dude, stop punching holes in the wall, man. Yeah, yeah. Their visions, God talking to Ezekiel, yeah. telling Ezekiel to tell him what he told him to tell him. Right. Their visions, those it's very false clear prophets, so far. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are false and their divinations are a lie. Okay. So, just again to differentiate between visions and divinations, the visions are the. Um, the eyeballs false, on the. On the false assumption that God is talking to you. Oh. Yeah. You know, the, the, uh, what you're receiving from the Lord, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, whether it's, you know, something that you see or speech or whatever. Yeah. And a divination involves tools like, for example, throwing the bones. Yeah. Which, they which did. we talked about before also. Like yeah, they did that the a lot back in the. And the and the Purin or and something the, um, like that. What do you call it first? I, and the, 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 the words. Deuteronomy. Yeah. The, yeah. The um the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, the right, Torah. the Pentateuch. That's what I was trying to. Yeah, back in the Pentateuch, they they threw bones all the time. It seemed like, like the they law. Were, they did some divination back then. Yeah, so. yeah. It, it was good when Moses did it. But Apparently, now it's it's evil, false, and bad. Or actually, what was the guy that um was right after Moses? The um was that um oh, oh. he flew up to to heaven oh, in the Elijah chariot? or Elijah? No. Oh, was it? That? Yeah. Those were the dudes. that I was thinking. No, up. I'm thinking of the guy that um who was the one that, that knocked so down the wall of Jericho. Oh, Joshua. Joshua. That's what I'm thinking of. And they I only definitely, know it because of that song, Joshua Fit the right, Battle right, right. of Jericho. <laughs> they Jericho. definitely threw bones in Joshua. They did. I remember that specifically because they were standing in one of the cities mm-hmm. and they did that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So they did divinations and that was fine. Yeah. But we don't do that anymore. And somewhere along the way, it just became, why are you doing that shit? Right. Don't do it. Never. Right. And I'm like, but sometimes. Well, but there was also like they said early on that um, saying prophecies Mm -hmm. is either good or heretical yes because if you're wrong it's heretical yeah if you're right it's a prophecy yeah it just depends (laughs) so you better hope that the winds blow your way my friend yeah so i would imagine probably maybe earlier on the same thing would have applied to divination as far as far as if you're right then obviously god caused that to happen if you're Mm -hmm. wrong then obviously you're doing a a a black art of some type or right exactly right and, and you speak with demons and dead people well, and I mean, shit like that. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so God is still talking. So he's like, those bitches lie. Yeah. Okay? Even though the Lord has not sent them, they say, the Lord declares and expect him to fulfill their words. So he's like, they put words in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. Have you not seen false visions and uttered lying divinations when you say, the Lord declares, though I've not fucking spoken? So he's like, y'all be going around behind my back saying shit about me. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says, says that he he says, this is what he says he says to Ezekiel that he wants him to say. This is where he's prophesying to the prophets who profited. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because of your false words and lying visions, I am against you, declares the sovereign Lord. Okay. And I think. That he told them, and you got to sing it just like that. Is that what he... I am yeah. against you. Yeah, yeah, right. 
My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and utter lying divinations. Lying liars. Okay. And the lies who tell them. Mm-hmm. Wait, lying liars. And wait, how did I don't that remember? I, yeah. It's Frank Franken. What's his name? Al Franken. Al Franken. He wrote a book. And lies was, and the lying liars who tell them. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. what it is. Lies yeah. and the lying liars who tell them. Right, yeah. 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 I just, I love that title. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. They will not belong to the council of my people or be listed in the records of Israel. Oh, that's Ooh, big business. That's a, yeah. Because when we covered that before, when they don't mm-hmm. listen in the records, that basically means they're erasing all. All um, their history. All, yeah. And that like, whole family. Yeah, like is, your whole line of uh, yeah, family. Yeah. It's not just that they're not going to list your name, but like your entire your, fam- familial name. Yeah, your is progeny erased. is like gone from right. the the culture. Like, yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, you're cut off. Right. I mean, that that's basically fancy words for saying bitch bye. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nor will they enter the land of Israel. Oh, womp womp. No promised land for you. Wait. Aren't they already in Israel? No, the, now he's talking to them. They're back at the... Okay, so remember in the last chapter, the vision ended and then um, he got, he was, he got he went dropped back to the, off yeah. back at the river. Oh, so Kuru, like he's whatever. talking to the elders that are sitting there in his house yes, that were prophets. Exactly, the elders. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay. And that was like three or four chapters ago that yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Um, Ezekiel started to have this vision while these elders were visiting his house, and we were like, "God damn, you have a house up in Babylon." Well, it's just it's been a lot of back and forth. I can't mm-hmm. keep track of whether he's in Jerusalem or if he's in Babylon because mm-hmm. there's been it hasn't the, the timelines and the the way it's happening They're hasn't been real, real clear. clear. Yeah, and it's been a little scattered as to how they cover it. So. Yeah, and without notes, like yeah. we would be so lost. Right, right. Because not only were we like, "Oh, you got a house up there in Babylon? That's cool. Yeah. Nice for you. Whatever." Right. Doesn't really sound like refugee status or whatever. Like you sound like you're okay, I guess. And then not only that, but you have visitors. Um, okay. <laughs> and then the visitors were the fucking elders, which it, you made it sound so casual. Like, oh, I guess they just come by. Yeah. Right? And apparently, the according to what we read back in that chapter, yeah. yes, the elders did come by regularly, probably to hear, you know, hey, what's the haps with that god guy? Yeah. So, right. um, yeah, so he's talking to them now, and he's like, ooh, y'all been saying some shit. Just FYI, God's telling me to tell you right. that he gonna get you. Yeah. Which is yeah. what he's been saying, like, this entire book. He gonna get you. Yeah. Okay. That, that's basically the Bible in a nutshell so far is he gonna get you. I just imagine this message wasn't received well by them. Right. You know, like, they all came to his house, and they're all sitting there, and he's telling them, hey. I know. God says you guys are fucked. Yeah. And then <laughs> there's, like. That tracks. And then, is, that, is that what happened? Like, and, then, and then he's like, and I have to go to bed now, so please leave. Good night. Bye. Right? Bye. Bye. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Like, oh, please don't kill me. Yeah. Then you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. Okay. Because, you know, he always got to add that. Yeah, sure. Because they lead my people astray saying peace when there is no peace. And because when a flimsy wall is built, they cover it with whitewash. Therefore... Tell those jackholes who cover it with whitewash that it is going to fall. Hmm. He didn't really call them jackholes, no, but it yeah. sounded like a fun thing right. to say. Pretty much any time you interject a cuss word into the Bible, it's mm-hmm. not, you know, I know. actually there. I just, I, I, I've gathered that over the years that we've been doing this, that, right. that you do that. So. I, I do, but I also am trying to just put it out there for new listeners. Yeah, sure. That I sometimes add random you, words. You do. You yeah. Do. yeah. Rain will come in torrents, and I will send hailstones hurtling down, mm. and violent winds will burst forth. That literally happened to us last week. Did it? I don't even remember that. Okay, well, was it a few weeks ago then? Maybe. Whenever we had that hail and the strong winds and whatever? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, recently-ish, yeah, ish, I guess. Yeah. I said last week, but it was probably like last month. Right. What is time? Y- yeah. When the wall collapses, will people not ask you, where's the whitewash you covered it with? So, will they ask that? I would think that that would not be the first thing I would ask as to where the whitewash is. Where did it go? The fucking wall just collapsed. I'm not asking about the whitewash. Why would I ask about the whitewash? But my paint job. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Okay. He sa- This is what he says he says. Okay. okay? Yeah. In my wrath. I will unleash a violent wind, and in my anger, hailstones and torrents of rain will fall with destructive fury. So, okay. he's like, remember just then when I said I was going to bring a storm? So, now tell him I'm going to bring a storm. I find it interesting, unless this is just, like, symbolism, 
for Babylon invading, mm-hmm. but um, the, this is a natural disaster. Mm-hmm. This is not God using Babylon as a tool to destroy Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Now, see, I actually read in the notes, and I didn't think to jot it down because it didn't seem important or relevant. Okay. But now that you say that, yeah. apologists are saying that, oh, um, the storm is symbolic for okay. um, the the Babylonian um, well, conquery thing. I'm going to push back a little bit because um, in Ezekiel specifically versus other prophets that we've read so far, mm-hmm. um, Ezekiel is very vague as to how these prophecies are going to transpire. Yeah. And um, they, they often involve not not saying exactly how it's going to happen. Right. Right. So like they, he leaves it open. There is some type of thing that's going to happen. Right. That's going to destroy the walls and, or the people and yeah. what have you. And it, it might be like a storm. It might be a storm. It might resemble a storm. Right. Right. It could be a storming of bad guys that get us. But it just strikes me that why, why are some um, prophets able to prophesy directly about mm-hmm. what's going to happen and some have to be very vague and, and use a lot of symbolism like why why are there two different types of messages that god is sending to these people because jeremiah was in the same basic time frame right as what ezekiel is okay. so so i can answer that if we're going with the obviously god doesn't exist right sure okay, okay. so if we're going with that Here's why. Because Jeremiah was very specific, right? But he was not part of um, the, he was not a prisoner in Babylon. He right. was a double agent on the free, mostly. I mean, that's the and idea that we came up with. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. So he knew what was happening in both places because he had family in high places in Jerusalem. And also he was in direct Words okay. with Babylon. So if we're to take so, the, the, the if we're to give them the benefit of the doubt, right? We could say that Jeremiah mm-hmm. was just a double agent, right? And it, he could you know, read the winds easier, and he could because so. he's in Jerusalem and he could see what's mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. And then Ezekiel, so he was able to be more specific, right? And but then Ezekiel is in Babylon prophesizing what's going to happen in Jerusalem, and he's only got that part of the story, right? But again, it is God telling him to say these words that are going to happen, and hypothetically, according to the Bible, the same thing was happening to Jeremiah, or, yeah, Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's still the Word of God prophesizing these things through the prophets. And so that's that's where it gets a little, you know, harrowing, or, or, you know, muddled with regard to the message. I was giving the actual real answer, and you were (laughs) asking, like, why can't God deliver better messages? And I was like, because God isn't right, right, right. I, I'm saying in canon, in obviously, canon, right, not, not right. you know, we we obviously don't believe that God exists. So, right. but I'm, we're trying to give this the the sense that we're we're trying to uh, if sometimes we take allow, it at its word. If sure. we take it at its word, how does that work? Right. right. Okay. And and in in essence, it doesn't. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It just doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So God is still yakking. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. I will tear down the wall you have covered with whitewash and I will level it to the ground so that its foundation will be laid bare. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when it falls, you will be destroyed in it and you will know that I am the Lord. Such a friendly, friendly bit of a. He's so sweet. Terror that's going to happen there. He's so sweet when he kills yeah. his own people. Right. Right. Aww. Yeah. So I will pour out my wrath against the wall and against those who covered it with whitewash because murder is fun and I love it. I love killing people. Fear the Lord. It does seem to have to happen quite a bit. He always says, fear the Lord. Never, never not be afraid. Never not be afraid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will say to you, the wall is gone, and so are those who whitewashed it, those prophets of Israel who prophesied to Jerusalem and saw visions of peace for her when there was no peace. How dare they see peace? Declares the sovereign Lord. It's yeah. the, it's the, I mean, obviously, he's saying it's a false message, so yeah, yeah. they don't like false messages in the Bible. So Right, right. I just, I'm like, why you got to be so murdery? You could, you could prove your point. And get so much more love and fear for you. Yeah. If you weren't such a dick. Well, and if you presented yourself outside of, like, again, we've talked about this multiple times, but like if you presented yourself outside of prophets who are a bit unreliable, right? Maybe people would be more inclined to believe that you exist and actually fear you, right? Why do you keep picking weirdos as your reps? What? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, 
it's really odd. We've, we've found many faults with the, the three prophets that we've read about thus far. Well, the three prophets that we've read about post the time of Moses and everything. So yeah. It's almost like God doesn't have a good plan. Well. Um, In canon. Yeah, it, it does. It does seem a bit like that sometimes. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like God can't tell the future and doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> and and you know he has changed over time. We we've definitely seen that. Definitely. So it's almost like when people say that God is steadfast, that he's not right. And also that like he changes his mind a lot and relents and repents. Mm. And you know it's almost yeah. it's almost like. Maybe God, if God is real in the Bible, it's almost like the people that wrote that shit down wrote it wrong. Mm. Yeah, that, that could that could be. I mean, or, there's definitely going to be some human error when humans write it. So, or um, if they were like led to write it magically by God in mm-hmm. canon, yeah, it's almost like God is a braggadocio and <laughs> um, was like, "Hey, put this in there. Put how I got a big D. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. make sure they all know. Yeah. Okay." Okay, I'm continuing now. He's still going on and on. Okay. Now, son of man. You mere human. You worm. Yeah. Set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own imagination. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, he's going after the women's now. Oh, well, because I mean, that tracks. Yeah, the Why prophet. Not? Yeah. The prophetesses. Well, I mean, he is angry at them because they always have those Asherah poles around and stuff. So, yeah. yeah well, yeah, but he's not going on. after, like, just women in general. He's going after specifically... Um, the prophets that are women. That's interesting to me, actually, because mm-hmm. I don't know that I've actually specifically heard that there are women prophets right. thus far in the Bible well, at all. Prior to this, we heard of a witch, the witch of Endor. Sure, sure. We've heard of um, enchantresses. Right. There was also Moses' sister, mm-hmm. um, which she was kind of important. And Wasn't her name Muriel or Miriam? That sounds about right. And then God made her not be able to speak ever again yeah so Uh, you know because he's a dick yeah yeah um yeah so there were women we just don't give a shit about them as usual generally yeah yeah yeah. so anyway prophecy against those bitches and say this is what the sovereign lord says you know tell him i says that i says woe to the women who sew magic charms on all their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their heads in order to ensnare people. Hmm. Those witches. Probably because they are, are uh, they're dripping with honey and stuff. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah. those honey licking. The, the, they're they're ensnaring. They got the honey covered ens- lips. They're ensnaring them with their sexual wiles and they're, they're honey covered lips, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, they nasty. They're gonna make you walk that crooked path. <laughs> <laughs> Will you ensnare the lives of my people but preserve your own? I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah, that is what I will do. Yes. Sure. You have profaned me among my people for a few handfuls of barley and scraps of bread. Hmm. Ooh, he's like, you sold your soul for such a low price. Right, but he's not even talking directly to them. Right. Like, he he literally has not said these words to them. Right. So he's he's saying this through Ezekiel again. Mm Mm-hmm. He's like, maybe, maybe, Ezekiel, maybe. go tell them that they should have charged higher prices. <laughs> <laughs> By lying to my people who listen to lies, you have killed those who should not have died and have spared those who should not live. Mm. Okay. okay. I don't really uh, well, how, see that. The, how have they spared who should? I mean, like, it's not up to them to make those decisions, right? Well, okay, what he's saying is you led them astray, and therefore these people, obviously these men can't be helped. They would have been fine. They've had that. That theme has run through the the Old Mm -hmm. Testament quite a bit, and I do not like that at all. The men are fine. It's the women leading them astray. Men are just mere monkeys. Yeah. They cannot help themselves. And therefore, as I always say, I will agree with you if men are monkeys and cannot control themselves and can't help it. They should not be in power or have driver's licenses or be allowed to vote because they're just monkeys. They can't help it. Right. Those yeah. poor. I'm inclined to ag- agree with you generally. They just can't help it. Yeah. They see a woman and they go, Spore, yo, 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 and they got to go get it and I, hit it. I'm very proud of the fact that I'm able to think on my own and ha- mm-hmm. come to my own conclusions and, and create my own actions based on my own morals it's and, almost like you're you know, not a monkey and I, that you can help it i endeavor to be you know just me right and uh i'm pretty happy with that yeah so thus far but throughout the bible if it changes i'll let you know this is this whole book is just like an apologist for men being rapey nasty fucks it, it does seem that way sometimes yeah. yeah 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 
So this, again, is those men would have been walking the straight path had these damn bitches not led them astray. Right. I and I'm it. like, maybe they were already astray and that's how they found the witches. Yeah. You know? I would imagine. Yeah. You don't just like walk down the street and trip over a witch like, oh, hey, no. hey, while you're down there, can you uh, throw me a spell? They, they know that they got to walk down, you know, that dark alley to find mm-hmm. them. So they, they, they chose to walk down that dark alley. They knew first, where they so, were going. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Okay. Tell him what I says. Yeah. I'm against your magic charms with which you ensnare people like birds, Mm. and I will tear them from your arms. So, you led them astray, Mm -hmm. you damn bitch, so I'm going to kill them. Yeah. And it's your fault. Not me, the murderer. It's your fault. Yeah. And not their fault because they were tricked, but I'm still going to kill them anyway. Why are you making me kill the people that you led astray and you? Because... What? Woman. What? <laughs> Maybe you just don't kill them. Right? Like, you, hold on, hold on. Let's untangle this. Don't murder. Right. And it's you, like one of your commandments. You literally have told us, God, in the Bible, in canon, has told us that he has the ability to change people's hearts. Mm-hmm. Change their fucking hearts. Yeah. Don't kill them. Yeah. It bring, send them a message. Show them that you're powerful. Show them something. Let's be to, problem solvers. Right. Right? Yeah. I will set free the people that you ensnare like birds. Why we got to be ensnaring birds all the time? I don't know. I don't know. I will tear off your veils and save my people from your hands, and they will no longer fall prey to your power. Oh, so they got power. That's I mean, cool. he's in me. Yeah, he said that. Yeah, wow. Right? He's granting them power. That's kind of cool. They probably were influenced by Lilith or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lilith, the ultimate she male. Yeah. She got it. Right. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Will we? Will you know that? I I said it a Only because Ezekiel times. told us, but a hundred times. Not per because chapter. you told us. Right. Okay. Because you disheartened the righteous with your lies when I had brought them no grief. Mm-hmm. And because you encouraged the wicked not to turn from their evil ways and so save their lives. Therefore, you will no longer see false visions or practice divination. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, so they were seeing visions. I was seeing visions. Therefore, um, in my mind, like, if I'm seeing visions, I'm thinking, surely they come from God, right? Well, but God was saying he's going to stop them from seeing visions, right? right? So, so he was allowing it before yeah. by that, that line of thought, yeah. right? Yeah. Why was God allowing them to see false visions? Right. And now he's going to stop them from seeing those visions. And he's punishing them and the people that were led astray by them. And and those women, if they were really seeing visions, right. probably really thought that they were seeing God's vision. Well, yeah. If you see a fucking vision and you live in a time when apparently God is all around or something. like And there's it, prophets running and there's amok. There's prophets everywhere. You're going to think that, that that vision you saw mm-hmm. was from God. And if God has the ability to end you seeing those visions... It only makes sense that God allowed you to see those visions in the first place. Otherwise, he would have stopped it before. Right. Yeah. So he's essentially allowing the thing to happen so from they, these people, so, and then he's going to kill people for having these things happen to them. Right. That they can't help. That's Because, see, I thought that he was saying, you're liars and you lie, and you made that shit up. Right. But what he's just saying is, you were having some visions, but that shit didn't come from me, and I'm going to stop that. Right. And it's like, right. hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I'm not okay with this, sir. Yeah. Like, no. That's, 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 just, that's just a bad, that's a bad uh, That's the whole there. thing is I not I good. I don't like that. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not down with that. No. no. So he is going to stop them from seeing false visions or practicing divination. And I'm like, what, you going to break my fingers? I could throw a goddamn bone. <laughs> what? I will save my people from your hands. And then you will know. That your name is the the Lord. I'm the Lord. He's the, he's the Lord. I'm the Lord. Yep. The end. Because he stopped it. The thing that he let happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, good job, you. Good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's awesome. So let me ask you this: Was it uh, demons? Was it other gods? Was it like where did those visions come from? I don't know. Sometimes they do lend power to demons in the Bible and mm-hmm. uh, and say that those things are caused by these outside influences or whatever. I mean, we just literally read about that in our. Um, book club on Sunday. Right, but he's claiming, again, he's claiming the ability to stop it, Mm -hmm. which means that he, at some level, Mm -hmm. allowed those things, whether it was him or a demon, Right. he was aware that they were happening, he allowed them to happen, you know, essentially. Right. What if it was other gods? 
like those little minor gods, those right. other deities from other the places. ones that sometimes exist and sometimes don't. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So I don't know. I just feel like these women got a bum rap. I just don't know how when you have one person telling you the correct message uh-huh. versus like a hundred other people telling you wrong messages, right? That and all they're seems, all different. That, that, well, but they all he's he's talking about the peaceful message, right? Uh huh. So it corresponds with peace. Yeah. They're telling you a message that corresponds with each other. Yeah. And there's one person saying something counter. Yeah. And he's acting weird and digging holes in walls. And <laughs> seeing fucking eyeballs on wheelchairs with, with fucking <laughs> angels with four heads and <laughs> yeah. Oxes and right. like, sphinx. That doesn't days. sound like the most fucking reliable source to me. Yeah, I'm going to go with the ones preaching peace, honestly. Sounds better to me. Yeah. I I'm, mean, you know. Jesus did. Right. I mean, I'm not there yet. So right, we're not spoilers. there yet. We don't, we don't know for sure. Right. It's, I've, it's I've the, heard that That's he, the word on the street. Uh, the things that I've heard about Jesus is that he's all like into peace and stuff. But I don't know. I've also been told that he's too woke. Got it. So. Okay. Well, I guess we'll have to see when we get there. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, um, the way people think of Jesus has changed dramatically just over the last 10 years. And even prior to that, over the last several hundred years. Oh, so. yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think it's been a constant change mm-hmm. over thousands of years. Right. But, but specifically in our time, in our lifetime. Yeah. It has definitely changed in our lifetime. Dramatically. As to what Fearfully. that is. Yeah. So. Before, like, Jesus was just kind of weird to me. Like, I didn't get it. Yeah. And um, over the last 10 years, I am actually, like, scared of having a jesus conversation with people because they literally don't like their own guy sometimes and, sometimes and want they they want to shove his boot up your ass or something right and they think that jesus was not for peace and love and that he was actually for war and and- again it depends on what denomination you're talking about but i mean oftentimes when you're talking about like the <clears throat> white me, nationalist the right republican wing. not Nutheads? Oftentimes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, yeah. Um, do you have anything else to go over tonight? Or? No, I'm just ranting at this point. Yeah, all right. So that was Ezekiel chapter 13. Indeed it was. Which means that we will be back tomorrow with... Ezekiel chapter 14. All right, we'll see you then. Bye! Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.